So um, for this discussion, how I won master's admission and scholarship in Sweden, our special guest is Mr. Felix, who will introduce himself properly before we commence. I myself am your host tonight, and my name is Amaris Eugenius. And I want to also state, in this discussion tonight, we are not standing as representatives of the Swedish Institute, nor are we standing, nor are we standing as representative from Swedish government. None of the above doing this on individual grounds, and we're doing this to encourage every one of you to explore the academic opportunity in Sweden. I'm hosting this event from Stockholm, Sweden, and once again, I welcome every one of you to this event. And in Sweden, or in Sweden, we say, Ba come. So um, there are some ground rules that we still need to obey since this is an online session. Please, ladies and gentlemen, keep your mind moot. Please moot yourselves. Moot yourselves. Put off your camera, your video. Only the guest is allowed to use video camera. If you lose internet connection, kindly uh, readmit yourself. And like I said initially, this session is recorded. So I will hand over to our special guest who will introduce himself and own the floor. Mr. Felix, welcome, sir. Thank you very much. Please, can you all hear me? Yeah. Uh, I, I, I want to be sure you're not the only yes. one here. Yes, I can okay. hear you. Okay. Yes, we can hear you. Okay. Please, if you can't hear, please, uh, you um, maybe that, I don't know how, how would they signal? Those who cannot hear, how would they? Yes, I can hear you. Okay. I think everyone can hear. Okay, it's okay, it's okay. They should use their earpiece. Okay, no problem. So thank you very much. Um, Genius, thanks for this opportunity. And um, please, I, if I'm talking too fast, please slow me down. Sometimes I can be fast. So please just let me. My name is Felix, if you know me well. I'm from Nigeria. I won the uh, scholarship last year, 2019. I came to Sweden. Now, the, the topic is how did, I, how did I win it? But before then, I'll introduce myself a little bit. I'm Felix from Nigeria. I had my first degree in fisheries, agriculture, specialized in fisheries back in Nigeria then several years ago. Then I worked, um, after studying, I worked in Nigerian aquaculture industry for more than 20 years. So that tells you that I'm not a, I'm not a teenager. So uh, that's a question that regard that how, at what age can we apply? So we'll talk about that later. So I've worked for several years in aquaculture. Then I've also had the opportunity of working in management consulting where I've been a consultant. Uh, I've not only consulted in aquaculture, I've also consulted in management because I did some MBA as well. So, and then along the line, I just had, I just was in, because I'm interested in research, I want to study more. So I decided to, to seek for scholarship because I know it can be very expensive to, to, um, to study, to sponsor yourself outside of the country. So I decided to apply and, and I only applied once and I got it. So the, the issue is how did I get it? How did I? Please, can you hear me well? I want to be sure you hear me well. Okay. No, we can. Okay. Okay. So it's um, one of the things I I note I, I want to say emphatically is the Swedish scholarship is one of the easiest to get. It's one of the simplest to get, but but there's a rule to it. Uh, you must you must follow details. It must be very detailed. Their rules are not uh, are not big, are not bogus. Only that you must mind details. The Swedes are they don't speak. Um, their, their first language is not English, 
so they don't like big grammar. So they only want details. So the first thing is you want to, I want to uh, uh, come to Sweden, you want to get a scholarship. First thing is you want to study their website very well. The website is so detailed and much. So you have to first study everything. I studied, I was to apply in October and I started studying by, by April. So about six months before the application, I studied the two websites, that's the United Admissions and the si.se, that's, that's the scholarship website. For six months, I studied them as if I had exams to write on them. So well, because they are so detailed that they can also be confusing if you don't, if you don't give details. Now, the re uh, one of the things I found out since last year that I've been mentoring people is that a lot of people don't read, they don't study that, those websites, they don't follow those instructions, so, or they don't read them well. So how do I know? By the questions they ask me again and again. By the time you ask me one question, I will know if you have read or not. So people want to just apply without paying the price to study those websites. Every instruction, everything you need, every secret you need is in those pages. Go through them in detailed form. You read them well. It takes a lot of um, time. It's not as simple as you think it is. And yet, the, these instructions are simple, but so detailed that they are much, you need to give them time. So when you're applying, it becomes very easy for you. I have had the opportunity of studying so many, or go, uh, going through many applications, both last year and this year. Because after each application, uh, um, people send their, their applications to me, I go through them, and I see reasons why they didn't get it. They have the qualification, they qualify for it, they have the work experience, they have the leadership experience, but little, little details, some as simple as stamp. There, so we'll get it later. As simple as putting stamp, people take that for granted, and yet, and so, and so because of that, they miss it. So the first rule is study those websites well. Sometimes I'm, I'm um, tempted to get angry by the questions I get. Because something as simple as, um, I don't want to say now, um, very simple things that you can easily see on the website. Okay, how do I send my transcript, for instance? How do I send my transcript? It's written, written there, but uh, many people don't go through that, and, and it, it can put it, it can put us it put in problem. So read them, read the um, uh, website very well. That's the, the first rule. Read the website very well. I studied for six months, studied in detail to be sure I didn't make any mistakes, and and it paid off. Um, Swedish scholarship or the admission in Swedish scholarship is very easy. It's nothing mysterious about it. It's nothing difficult. It's not like other scholarships where you have to um, get an English admission test or you have to have a uh, first class or you are a second class upper or you need to be under 35 years old. No, they don't have those restrictions. That's why it's very easy. So whatever age you are, you can apply at 70. <laughs> they don't have any, anything against that. Whether you're 70 years old or 80 years old, if you apply, they will, and if you qualify, they will admit you. So no age restrictions, um, no GPA restrictions. You don't have to have a, a first class or two, one, whatever, whatever degree you can apply. Then you don't have to write English test. Once you studied English in your first degree, or, or you studied your first degree with English, then automatically you qualify for the language test. So you don't need to have that. So it's quite easy. All you need to is to, hello. Please put your microphone. Somebody is making it there. Okay, so you have to follow the rules. Follow the rules. Okay, follow, follow the instructions, detailed instructions. That's the key. First, that's the key and the major key. Okay, please, if you, hear, if you don't hear me well, please let me know. So then the next thing is after reading the instructions or reading the website well, then get your, prepare your documents, know the documents to, to submit. For instance, one of the questions I also get is, how will I send my uh, WIAC certificate for um, um, your secondary school certificate? It's not needed. You don't need that. The only thing they require from you is your university certificate. I didn't have to submit my secondary school certificate. It's not needed. So what are the documents to, supply, to, to, to uh, prepare? For the university admissions, all you need is your transcript 
and then your your, your certificates. And what certificate? Only your um, your university certificate, your bachelor uh, degree certificate, and then your school transcript. Your school will send your transcript. Then why sending it? You don't have input in it. You must not give them your number to submit with. You don't have to. You the cover page of the that's a cover page in your in your in your account in uh, in your uh, university admissions. You know you must not give them that cover page to put with your transcript. Don't worry whether your the, the school has your number or not. It does. It's not necessary. Once your university sends your transcript to Sweden, they know how to match it together. They know how to match your degrees. You don't have any impute in it. Don't tell them uh, put my number on it. No, you don't. If you do that, that means it's coming from you. If you attach your the, the, the cover note from your website or from your account to your transcript, that means it's being sent by you. You are disqualified automatically. So just uh, make sure, the one thing you must do is that don't just go apply for transcript in school and go sleep. Most universities in Africa, many people lost their admissions because their universities didn't send their transcript or they sent it too late. Um, I, have, I was almost losing out because of that. I applied for my transcript two weeks before the opening of the application. And then they told me that it will be ready in four weeks. That means two weeks, uh, by, uh, by the second week of October, it will have got into Sweden. That they will have sent it. After four weeks, I got in touch, I called them because I was at home. I they, had, they said we had, I should apply online and pay the fees and then they will send it. So, after four weeks, they said it wasn't ready yet. The fifth week, it wasn't ready yet. The sixth week, it wasn't ready yet. The seventh week, it wasn't ready yet. And I had paid. So by, uh, I paid in September. By November, I still had not gotten, the, my school has still not sent my transcript. So I had to go to my university. I got there and I went straight to the registrar to go complain that why would they hold my, why they, I paid and they are delaying me and then and all that. I got to the university, I found out that they had not even started processing it at all. Maybe that's all, that only happens in Nigeria. Other countries, I don't know how it works. But if your country is, if your university is one that they can delay your, um, your transcript, please ensure that you monitor it, monitor your transcript, otherwise you could lose out. You would think that your application is already in Sweden, meanwhile your school didn't even send your transcript and yet and you just miss that all. And monitor that, don't just sit down. So I had to um, um, follow the, and sh um, follow my transcript that day when I got to the school, but the next day it was sent. So I had to make sure it was sent before I left the school. So if your school can um, delay, don't just believe that they said, oh, we will send it and you keep quiet. No, ensure they do. Otherwise you, because that's the, big, that's the whole essence of it. If you don't have a transcript, there's no admission, no process and nothing happens. And after then, I, um, some other guys who, some, some of my friends called or some people I met online as well said, they eventually found that their, their, their schools didn't send their transcripts. So they lost out on admission and the whole process. So please monitor that. Don't just assume that they will send it. And at least for those of you in my, in my country, Nigeria, because many schools in Nigeria, they're that, they're that way. Ghana and other countries of West Africa, yours may be different, but if you know that they may delay, Please follow them up. And if you have already sent, if you already sent last year, you don't need to send again. If you already applied last year, you don't need to send transfer again. The one you sent last year is still, is still with them, so your account is still, is still safe. So no problem with that. Yeah. So your document, uh, you need to uh, send was only my transcript, which the school sent, and then my own, and then I, I had additional certificate, certificate to send. My degree certificate. Now we have two options to send that. If either you, uh, you scan and send to them, or you um, make photocopy. Now, if you scan it, be sure that the stamp, the, uh, the embossment or the seal on the certificate is, is um, illegible enough. Otherwise, if they don't see the, the name of the school where in the, in the logo or in the stamp or anything, you are disqualified. So be sure that the seal or the embossment or whatever they put on it is so visible, it's clear enough for them to read. Now, if, if you're not, if you're sure it's not, it cannot be legible enough, 
then you have to get certified copy. Just simply photocopy your, your university degree, take it, go to your university, then let them uh, certify it. They will sign on it with their stamp that official, whatever, whatever certificate, they will, they will certify, they know what to do. Uh, then, uh, then, they will, then they will say, you know, you take it from them, you uh, mail it to, I have to use um, Fed, is it FedEx or UPS, courier service to send it to Sweden. So that's allowed because it's your, own, it's your own certificate. So you send it to them. So you only uh, use certified copy if the scanned copy is not clear enough or if you are sure it's, it's clear. I put another stamp on it again so it is it's authentic. Yes, so that one, you, when you are sending your certificate, that means you must put your cover letter on that. But I had additional thing to submit. My change of name, somebody asked a question about change of name. The name on my certificate is not the same name I'm using right now. So I have to do change of name. So it's not the same name on my international passport. So I have to do change of name. Now, um, I got the change of, that change of name certificate they gave me. I have to take it to the court where they also certified it. That is a, it's a photocopy of the original. So it was certified, then added it to my the degree certificate, which I sent to Sweden. So your name doesn't have to tally. If you have your, another name or your, Certificate and your and your marital certificate and your marriage certificate, for instance. Maybe you are married, you now have your the name of your mar uh, marriage certificate and your international passport. So that means the name your the name of your marriage certificate must be with the same name on your national passport. So it doesn't have to be the one on the certificate. Once you you have that change of name, that already covers that. So my name, the name of my I have two names. One of my uh, school um, certificate and my not international passports it's allowed once you have a document proving that you have done a change of name so that's it was that so then um once i do done with that then you wait for results but when you when you are filling your uh, when you're online doing your online application or whatever just be sure that you don't make any mistakes or whatever the then yes um, the cost is to select yes so don't forget that why you're not applying before you apply, before you um, go to the page, you have, must have selected four, course, uh, four programs. They call it programs in Sweden, not courses, programs. Um, you, four of them, and they must be related to your course degree. You, for instance, I can't, um, I read agriculture in the first degree, now I want to go do international relations. It doesn't, it doesn't work that way. So here they, they are looking for professionals, they are looking for experts, they are looking for people. So it's easier for you to get admitted to a course that related to yours. Because when they look at your transcript, they look at if you have the num right number of credits to qualify for, for that program. If you don't, for instance, if you, don't, you want to do math course and you don't have enough of math in your first degree, they won't apply, they won't admit you. But if you do have, then you are okay. So be sure that what the four programs you are applying, you are selecting, that are related to your first degree. It will give you an edge, it will give you an advantage. Okay. So, um, for instance, you read the political science. So, if you're not taking, if you're now selecting courses, in anything that has to do with politics or something, in international relations or all those things, that, of course, when you read the program where, um, requirements, you know if you qualify or not. Many people apply for; they just select programs without knowing if they actually qualify for it. That's the number one error. I've seen a lot of people who do that. So be sure you, and then you put them in the order you wanted, the first one you want, the second one you prefer, the third one you prefer, because they will always take on the four. If, if the first one is not, if you don't qualify for the first one, they'll consider you for the second one. I was admitted to the second choice. My first one, sustainable development, I wasn't admitted for it, I was put on reserve. So I was admitted for the second one. So which what I'm studying right now. So then, so that's what the, once you submit all that, then, so the, University admission is not as difficult to get. The admission is not very difficult. Once you select the right courses and the right school, yes, the right course, yes, the four, those four ones, then the right school. You could be qualified, you could have all the, uh, the, um, all, all the transcripts is okay. If you choose some schools, you may not be admitted. For instance, um, Uppsala University was my first choice to study sustainable development. But 900 people applied. When the results came out, I was on, I was on the reserve. 
And my, uh, my number on the reserve list was 46 positions. That means even if they had to consider, uh, um, they want to pick some other 10 or 15 people on the reserve, it's not going to be my turn. So there were too many people who qualified for that because there were so many of them. So the big schools in Sweden, they, they are a little bit tricky to apply into. So select, if possible, select your programs from schools that are not the big four. Uh, um, University, um, Gothenburg, um, what's it called? Just Stockholm, and all those, all those big ones. Some of the schools in the northern part or in other regions are, or some of the, uh, the little um, less known popular schools there, they admit. All schools in Sweden are the same, they all have the same standard. It's just that some are older than others. But some are, sometimes we just want to say, I want to attend the University, I want to go to Scotland University, Stockholm University. All schools in Sweden have the same standard. So anyone you pick, you have the same standard of education. So, but I would rather that you pick, um, you pick for, for you to have an advantage, pick schools that are not too big. They don't, have, they don't have so many people applying in there. So that will help you well. If you just want to, that's a, I think that somebody gave it, um, sometimes somebody gave a, a website on how to, where to go to, to know the number of people who applied the previous year. That will make you know, have an idea about how many people are applying for it. So if you are taking a course that is, you know, that a lot of people apply for, for instance, mass com, somebody doing mass com, you know, that a lot of people will apply for that. Then you rather want to, want to choose a school that is not among the very big ones that you know, or the older schools, some of the younger schools, and probably in the northern part of Sweden. In the northern part, there are schools that are there, um, because it's of the weather a little bit, they, are, they have longer dark days and then can be a little colder. So, so many of the schools there, people don't want to go there, so, and yet they, are, they have free, free, very free, um, or the easy admissions in there. So depending on your course, so if your course can allow you to, to move between schools, then you can pick some other really, really smaller schools rather than, rather than or want to go to University uh, of Stockholm or Uppsala University where you have a lot of competition. So competition can put you out of the game. So you don't want, you don't want that. So that's all that. So the right programs, the right schools, you can use, choose the schools that can give you edge. Then, so that's basically for, for the university own. So while I was applying, I made, of course, in, in New Sweden, you already have one uh, great university. So I didn't have a choice of choosing um, from different schools. So there are some of you that may not be able to change from, or you don't have that, you can't make that kind of choice because your program is only restricted to some, only some few schools. So, but if you have the opportunity, if you can move around, then choose other schools rather than the big ones. Um, so then that's all about the um, school admission. So there's not much stress with that. The big deal is the, um, is the scholarship. Please, I, somebody still hearing me? I want to be sure I'm talking. Somebody yeah, hearing? Yeah, we, we're with you, sir. Oh, okay, okay, because I'm just talking now. So I'm not getting any feedback. I want to be sure that somebody is hearing. Okay, so the big deal is the scholarship itself. Because it, uh, if, if, if uh, those of you who have done it before, if you observe that uh, most people who apply to the schools get admitted. A lot of people get admitted when you apply to it because it's very easy to get it. And now they don't, um, they don't ask for first class or second class, but if you have a little, if you say you have a, um, a third class or your, your GDP is low, then you want to apply to a younger school. Don't go for the big schools. The children doesn't look at, they don't, by their nature here, they don't look at first class. Even in school right now that we are studying, they don't give emphasis to who, who had an A or, or who came first. So who's the, the highest number of, they believe in, uh, raising everybody together. They believe in grooming everybody together. They believe in the process of education. They don't emphasize first or second. So the emphasis is on the CGPA. They want to know how many courses have you taken? Did you take this course that will qualify you to take this program? Have you taken enough mathematics to go apply for statistics? Or have you taken enough um, social sciences to, to go do sociology or masters? Have you done enough of a Greek scientist in first degree to qualify you to go do masters in agriculture, for instance, something like that. So they look at that. They look at the courses you have taken, not uh, not really the the marks you scored. So that's why I say in Sweden is quite easy to get admission into. So if you have a, a low grade, there's no problem with that. 
go ahead and apply, but be sure you select a place where there's no much competition. Look for other schools because some one one thing about uh, is that some schools have so much rush, there's so much crowd of people applying to them. What some other schools are, they have less people applying. Maybe because people don't know people don't know much about those schools, or they are in regions they don't want to go to. Maybe in the northern part because the northern part of Sweden can be cold. But when I was applying, I was willing to go to the north of Sweden. I'd rather go to the cold uh, rather than and stay in Africa that is hot. All my years I've been staying in Africa is hot, hot, hot. I hear nothing has come out of it. So I'd rather want to go and stay in the cold and go to get educated and get a scholarship. So don't be afraid oh of the cold. My God. So don't be afraid of the cold. You, 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 it's not, it doesn't, you adjust to it, you're cool. So, but pick school, uh, um, if you, you're low, your GPA is low, pick a younger school. Even if you have a high GPA, you still don't want to face competition. You don't want to take chances. Even if you had a first class, there are other many first class too that are coming in, so you don't want to um, take chances. Assuming they want to take 10 first class in that school and see first class students apply, that means some first class will still be, still be dropped. So don't take chances. Look for a place where you, you have a competitive advantage and then you apply in there. So I think I've said enough for the, for the universities, uh, for the schools. And then the results will come out after uh, in, sometime in April. And then, so the main one I was saying is the scholarship. That's where the details come from more. A lot of details. Where you now? First question. The first thing there is that you don't need to have a first class, or a second class, or any class to to qualify for the scholarship. Swedish Institute. They do, that, that's why they don't ask for your transcript. Your transcript only goes to your to the university. And no, no, so university admissions. In Sweden, they only, they don't, you don't apply straight to the schools. You apply to university admissions, it's a body that will, will connect to other universities. So you, you only, your first class may only work for you in university admissions, but, but not with scholarship. The scholarship, they don't need your, they don't need their first class. They don't want to see your, they won't ask for your results. They won't even see your results at all because you only send the templates they have sent to you you fill them and return to them. And what are the templates? Your scholarship, um, your um, work and leadership experience, your um, reference letters, your motivation letter, you have to answer the motivation, uh, answer the questions. And then, so those are the basic things that you have to submit to them. And that's what they will use to judge you, uh, to, to know whether you are qualified or not. They don't look at your degree at all. So you don't have to have a first class. Somebody asked a question that because it's so competitive, um, and I don't have a first class, I have a low GPA, do I find a chance? Yes, you have a, start a chance. The, if you, the person who has a, a first class, but doesn't have a work experience, does, he doesn't have start a chance. The, 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 the candidate or the applicant who has a second class lower, or maybe a, a, three, a three point uh, GPA over five, but has um, um, good work experience, Yes, we'll have an edge over the other person. So all they want is your leadership experience. And what does that mean? It means you must have worked, not just work, but relevant work. You have worked for at least 3,000 hours. And the work means that your first degree and your work must, must align. Um, I read agriculture, of course, especially in fisheries, I said. Then I worked in fish farm. I worked in aquaculture all my uh, so several years, so over 20 decades. Oh, sorry, two decades, rather, right sorry. So that was more than enough. So I have over 20,000 hours of work. They asked for only 3,000. I had over 20,000 hours. So um, they didn't ask for my degree, so I had enough of that. So the, your experience must align with your first degree. So if you read agriculture and you, are, and you worked all your life as a teacher, and you are teaching them, um, uh, uh, maybe you, because of the, you are teaching government in that school. You didn't even teach a Greek. You are teaching government. It's not right. It's not, it's not, it doesn't go together. So even if you are teaching, it must be that you, you taught agriculture, not something else. So I'm hearing some sound. Okay. Then um, the, uh, the leadership experience, that is, you must have an NGO. So there's a, a kind of tripod. Your degree. Um, training, your work experience, 
and your end user experience must all align. So um, many of the applications I went through, they, they, because they heard that N um, student wants you to go to have an NGO experience, so they actually went to uh, work in an NGO and they put that in their, in their, in their, in their application. But when I found that, I found out that the, uh, their experience in the NGO does not tally with their degree. So if I read agriculture or I read fisheries and I work in an NGO where I didn't have to do anything that had to do with fisheries, then it's not, it's, you're not qualified. You're not a, a professional. They are looking for a professional, somebody who, whose training and experience and work leadership experience is all in the same. So they are looking for somebody who knows what he's doing, somebody who has, is a professional at what he does. So if I read um, fisheries or agriculture, I'm not working in a law firm as their marketing manager or as, as, a, as the advertiser or something different there. Although it's an NGO, it doesn't, it doesn't work that way. It doesn't, I'm not, it, it, it don't, they won't consider that. So, so even if, look, think very carefully. I can also work in that NGO. Or let me just give you a practical example. Um, I read agriculture. I worked in an NGO that was into political training. They were, uh, they were training, or they are involved in community development, training people, enlightening them on political affairs matters. That was the NGO closest to me that I could apply to. So I got in there. Then I said to the management that, now you are training people on how to be politically aware on how on their civic duty as citizens, and then sometimes they will give them, give the poor food, go to the community and give them food free. And I said to them, okay, now you are training people on how to be politically um, literate. Why not let us introduce um, um, skill acquisition to it? So they said, I should give them an idea. I said, okay, let us train them on farming skills, uh, a fish farming skills. So I introduced that to that organization and I, was, and I took charge of that. I was now involved. So after training people on the politics and other civil, whatever, they will also not train them on basic farming skills, basic fish farming skills. So I was in charge of that. So even though I was working in an NGO that wasn't a Greek base, but my experience there was a Greek base. So if you take the application, a scholarship application, they will ask you, what, what SDG is related to the, your work experience in that organization? They are not going to ask you what SDG does the company. Uh, um, they are not going to, although they were asked, but they are not going to focus on the SDG of that organization, but the SDG of what you did there. So, if if I work in an engineering firm, there working as a fish farmer there, maybe I'm in charge of that farm in that engineering firm, then I qualify for that. So, be sure that what you do in your NGO and your office, they are all aligned with your background training. So the three must align. That makes you a professional. So don't just say, I work in an NGO. So somebody um, from, I don't want to be Eastern country, is it in Malawi? One of the ladies, uh, oh no, no, it's Malawi, Uganda. So um, if you work in an NGO where they were involved in whatever is lost, uh, those who, uh, the NGO is involved in, if you lose anything, they, they are in charge of it, you can go, maybe you lost your car, you lost your, um, you lost your wallet, you lost your whatever, whatever. So they are in charge of that. They make sure those things are, uh, are taken back to the owners or the owners uh, get their things back. But her training, she's, she's into, um, she's an engineer, into um, polymer engineer or something, polymer, plastic, whatever. So the NGO experience, though good for the society, she in, in, um, helped the society, but it had nothing to do with her background training. So when the result came out, she was, she, she, she was put on reserve. She was um, qualified in every other way. She had the number of hours, the number of leadership skills, she's the boss and, the, and all that. But the NGO put her a little bit, um, um, gave her some advantage, so she was put on reserve. And, on the long run, she didn't get it. She didn't miss out of it. So, so be sure that those three things align. Once your um, your training in school, your work experience, and your NGO, they all have to do with what you learned in school and the course you want to and the program in masters you want to study. They must align. 
That's for the, for the scholarship. That's the key there. But a lot of people miss that. So because I studied it, I studied the website so well, and I understood that, so I made sure that um, I didn't fail in that regard. Before I applied, I wasn't working an NGO. I had no, it was when I saw the NGO in the application, in their website, that I had to go to the NGO. And I created a department that had to suit my purpose, even though it wasn't an agric NGO. So if you are working an NGO right now, or you're already um, registered to an NGO, make sure that you uh, do something that is uh, related to the course or the program you're going to study in Sweden and what you do with your regular job. Even if they don't have it, introduce it to them. Or at the worst scenario, make sure that when, you, when they are filling the form for you, um, they, they can connect your, your, degree, um, your, your work experience and your degree together and your NGO experience together. You, uh, let me be clear there. Let me, make it, let me rewind. You have a relationship with, your, with the NGO, the authorities there, or whoever who is going to sign for you. Um, let them flow their reference to your, your degree training. Mm -hmm. Maybe, maybe you read marketing, but you're not working as a secretary in the, in the NGO. Maybe that's the only position you have. But so let the referee the, uh, make mention of marketing in his reference. That, of course, even though you are doing secretarial job, um, let them have, have a way of bringing in marketing into it, or publicity or relations or something that has to do with your degree. Otherwise, it will be seen that you, you are disconnected. Those, the two are disconnected. Make sure they always align together, even though that's um, um, what you do there is not totally with your background training, but find a way to connect them, use a, a language to bring them together. So I hope I'm clear in that regard, very clear there. Then in your work experience, um, some of us too, we, we work in places where our work experience does not have to do with our background training. So then the issue is how do I connect the two? How do I bring them together? Um, if I'm a, um, I read, um, uh, how do I put it now? Okay, I read, agree, then I'm not in the school. Of course, it is said that, it is said that you are, as an, uh, to be, you must have read ed education. But that you are teaching without education. And your program in university is not a master's program is not education. But if you are able to let them know that what you are teaching in that school is is what you learn in first degree, for instance, at Greek, or you bring it together, and then it, it makes a lot, it makes more sense than just say, I read agriculture, I'm teaching English. I'm teaching English in the in the secondary school. They don't go together. They don't, they don't match. I have seen a lot of applications like that. A lot of people send their own to me, and I see that. The, the schools they, they are teaching has nothing to do with what they studied. And so all that is, is, not, is not right. So those are little, little details to, to master so that you can, um, you will not be shortchanged. And the reason why some people get it and others don't get it because majority miss those points. Many applicants miss those points. I, I've, I've received several of such, and I think that all these little, little things are the reasons why people may, may fail it. Uh, people don't didn't get it. Is uh, Swedish scholarship is not mysterious. Once you, even though there's a God factor too, but ma major problem is the we are not detailed enough. We are not careful enough with the instructions. All these are in the instructions. We read them well. So um, the the the, so the the last letter part now is those templates. So fill them. Have them qualified. You know you have enough three thousand hours. You have. Um, in 3,000 years, you have enough NGO experience, you have enough work experience. Now, the work experience and NGO experience are, as well, there's a little one there I have to quickly say before I forget. You must have worked there as a senior person. If you worked in a place and you, uh, somebody sent his uh, application to me and all he was saying was, I, in the CV, in the, the CV, um, I, as an accountant, he's an accountant, so I take the money at the end of the closing time, I take the money to the bank. I cash the money at the cashier. I, I count the money. So all he was describing only, uh, only showed that he was just a, a young 
he was just an errand boy in the office. Yes, he was just an errand boy in the office. He's the one who, who collects money from the uh, customer. He's the one who runs to the bank to go and deposit it. He's the one who, who makes sure the, all the fire here and there is the one carrying someone up and down. You are simply an office boy, so you are not a leader. And as scholarship is looking for a leader, leadership experience, that it must have been a leader there. So you must be in a position whereby you have people under you, those who report to you. I, I, I hope I'm clear. So that means you must have, um, if you are an accountant, you'll be in a unit where there are those who report to you. Yes, you may not have had that in, in practical or in practice, say where you are working out, you are not, you're not even the boss there. But of course you work in a team, then you use such language as, um, I work in a team where I motivate this, I do this, I do that. Where you, you use the word motivate, the word um, inspire, that is to show that you have something in you that carries others along. They want to see that leadership thing in you. It doesn't mean that you must be general manager or the, the CEO, but they want to see that even the team where you work, you are able to, um, that's an influence you have on them. You influence them to do something. Not that um, you just say, I, I, some of us are, we are so, some of us are so, um, we are so gentle, so nice, so pious, so, so humble that we say, okay, I, I, I clean the floor, um, I, I empty the trash, I sweep the floor very well, um, um, uh, I, my boss, I do so, so much work. My, some of will say, um, when my boss is not around, I do this. So it simply means that you are, a, you are not really taking initiative. You're, it's only what you are told to do that you do. So they want to see a leader who initiates. They want to see what have been initiated in your organization. They want to see what you, how you lead in that place, even though you are in a team. Those are the kind of, so the language you'll be using in, in the scholarship, particularly when you write your motivation letter is, your motivation letter, your, your, your CV, those two ones, that the ones that you have to write by yourself. So those ones must have the language of a leader. When you use, I influence, I motivate, I inspire, I, all those kind of language, the verbs or adjectives that says things that you do, verbs that you, do, I do this, I am my team, I am a da 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 da. So if you only just put a picture that you are a good servant, then you are not qualified for the scholarship. But they want to see a leader in you. So it doesn't mean you must have had 10 years of experience like I, ha like I had, but in within those um, um, two years of your work experience, I want to see how you have led. Maybe you are the union, um, the, the union leader, or uh, in your class you were the, or your school you were the student union government or whatever you said to the general you were you were in charge of something. Areas where you have led, they want to see that. In your NGO, NGO doesn't have number of hours, but they also want to see how you what you do there. Not just that you you are the one who carries generator. You are the one who packs the plate after they have eaten. You are the one who, you are the one who washes the, the hand. You are the one who sets the chair and the tables. And you are the, somebody, uh, one of the applications said, when they are, anytime they have meeting in the office, is the one who, who, um, who runs around to make sure that the office is set for the meeting. Then you are a, you are a, you are a boy boy, you are a house boy. Uh, you are not a leader. So that is not what is needed. So although, you know, when you write something, you think that you are being nice, you are being gentle. Mm -hmm. They are looking for those who, who pass down instructions or who motivate others, who lead others. That's what they are that's what he's looking, looking for. Not the gentle office boy, not the gentle errand boy. No, no, a thousand times no. So you may not have been a general manager, but be sure that you are able to make them know that you do some things. And then, I don't know, even though I'm talking to the international community, but I'm sure, Genius, I hope I'm safe to say some things. Yeah, sure, definitely. Am I safe? We are very safe. Okay, I'm, okay, I'm very safe. Okay, I'm sure that you're not, uh, um, Kai is not watching me. <laughs> <laughs> okay, now, um, Sweden may not come to check your, um, come to your office. They may not come to your office to where you work. Are you getting what I'm saying? So now, um, how you, how it, how your, the way you package your, your, um, your application, you, 
it's about how you want it to be. Connect it with the right English. You may not have been the CEO, but you can sound like a CEO. Not that you are exaggerating, not that you are overpraising yourself, but there's some English you use that will show that you are mature. Now, um, I was listening to um, the, the guy who was, uh, uh, who was my senior, Bolaji. I mean, I'm, I'm sure some, some of you might have heard, heard, heard Bolaji, Mokolo Shaw, what's his name again? Bolaji, how many of you know him? Bola, um, what's his name again? Mokolo Shaw, Mokolo Shaw. Yes, 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 Mokolo Shaw. Yeah, I know him. So, so, so he said he worked in, in um, one of these um, companies that had to do with Somebody put up that thing. I'm hearing the baby's voice. So um, um, he worked in a, in a company that was working for another communication company, like a service, a younger company that was serving a bigger company like MTN. So he worked with that smaller company. But he was always in the computer room where he was monitoring the generators that were working in those uh, masks all around the, the, in the north the part of Nigeria. That was always his job. So, so he was just there monitoring the you know, they always all the sit down with the computer on how and then how to um, monitor all those things. And yet, he needed to write leadership experience. He needed to write his leadership experience. So, you know, he, that was a way he was able to connect, how to use, um, that was the way he had to write it. That he said there was one, uh, some little um, teamwork that was done, some project he was involved in. He used that as an um, as a jury on that. And then made made it look like he was the one in charge of that project. And then, even though the, it was a project of that company, he worked for that company. He wasn't lying, but was able to um, use that to boost his CV or his uh, his application. So he didn't have to now go and write there that he was always sitting there in one room where he was uh, monitoring computers. No. So you are not lying, but you are simply embellishing um, your, your you are presenting yourself in a better way. So that you don't look like a small boy. So I think that's, uh, let me not say too much there. Then, then so, uh, some of you will have some challenges when, when um, the reference letter comes, because you have you know, I saw another part the reference letter, where they will bring the template and then you take them to your bosses. I have faced that a lot. You take your reference letter to your, to your bosses and because of the, the detailed nature of the reference letter and the number of questions they will ask, I hope I'm not shooting my time, sir. No, we are we're, we're still good to go. Okay, okay, okay. Please check me because that is now um, the reference letters. When you get to your referees, made most of them, let me just say, eight percent of them, they are lazy to write. They don't want to write because they, they, there are a lot of questions and they just say, some of them will just say, mm, go and write for yourself and bring it. I will stamp it for you. Some of you will have that kind of experience. So. Um, some, some people called me and said they were not happy with that. I said, well, I, if I were you, I would be very happy because it's an opportunity for me to, to write what I want. So you simply ask, answer those questions by yourself, write, put the kind of thing you want, said the boss will, 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 will simply thank you for you, but you don't overpraise yourself, otherwise you'll be in trouble. So, and then if your referees are the ones writing by themselves, make sure that you monitor them because some of them will use languages that will be put in trouble. Because they don't understand, they didn't read the website, they, didn't under, they don't understand the details of what this course is all about. So they could be careless in their language. So educate them, let them know the importance and what to expect, direct what they will write. Give them an idea of what they will write, that this is what is expected. Otherwise, they will just, I read some of the referees and um, some of the reference letters, and those referees just wrote some things that even was even implicating. So let them know that um, it's important. You know, some referees, they will use that and maybe you don't have, um, they have been angry with you. They not really, they not really like your person because you have offended them. Then they, in, that, in that reference, they will be, say something that will put you in trouble. So we can be very careful there. Where, um, some of them, they are not doing it wickedly. Then it's not a wicked thing, but just that if that was all the much they know. They don't know the, the weight behind what you are doing. So guide them, educate them, take time to and put them on what it's all about so that they will know what to write. They will know the right language to use. They know the right adjective to use. If you, if you say in your CV that you are a leader in that organization and your referee, the man is telling, saying that you are he's an errand boy or, he, or he's, using, he's saying that um, you, you are very good um, in running errands or you are good. So it's already a contradiction. 
So be sure that he doesn't say things that will counteract what is in your CV or what you have said about yourself. So be very careful there. But if you are told to write it for yourself, be happy. Put all the adjectives you want, write all the things well, and make sure that he, and then it is um, signed. Then when they are stamping it, when they are stamping your, ref, uh, or your whatever stamp they want to put, now in my own case, the company had a weak stamp. The stamp was weak, it wasn't quite clear, and he didn't bother. He just stamped them and tried to come and pick them. So I got there, I thought that it was, it was not well, it, the stamps were not clear. I said, sir, please, um, this will not be, I, I won't be, um, this one will disqualify me. He said, but that's what we have. I said, yes, let me go and do another stamp. So I took the stamp, went to, to, to town, and then paid with my money to make another clear stamp. Mm. Just that, so that I will have the best um, stamp on my, on my, on my business. So don't just say because that's what they have, and then it's weak, and then you accept it. No, you can choose to do it. You just pay the price for it. Be sure that when they are stamping it, the name of the and they stamped them, one of the applications I saw, they only had the name of the organization, just like, for instance, MPN or, or Coca-Cola. Coca-Cola where? Coca-Cola Ghana or Nigeria or South Africa or where? So some of us in the CV will just write the name of the organization. We don't put the, the, the location. So the stamp must have the, the name and then the date. Of course, even, even the no date there, at least will read with your hand. But let there be location there. Say Coca-Cola Harare, or Coca-Cola Lagos, or MTN Ghana, or Accra, or something like that. So there should be a location there. Don't just say, I work in uh, Volvo. Volvo where? Volvo in Germany, or Volvo in Sweden, or Volvo in Cameroon, where? So that's another law mistake. So um, those are for scholarship and thing. Then what have I not said? So I think yeah. I'm. I think I thought touch almost everything. Yeah, so, so we have a lot of questions. Um, yes. and we've we've gone about for five minutes. So I think we... oh, wonderful. Yes, I'm done. I'm done. Yes. yes. Uh, uh, thank you so very much. Thank you so very much. Um, we have lots of questions. Okay, okay. So we'll start from there. So I'll be sharing my screen. So um, before this webinar, we had some questions already sent from the inbox. Yes, I think I've answered this one. Yeah, um, okay. Can I send it? No, if somebody said, can I send my degree in, a, in place of a small result? Now they, they ask for your degree certificate. It will, be, it will make more sense to, you don't want to take chances. So if um, you don't have it, I think I would recommend that you go to your school and get it. Except maybe it's not yet out. Then you can, if, if your result is not yet out, uh, maybe you know the. Uh, I think this is, the certificates come out early. It doesn't delay again, like my own time. So you can um, you, you can put your signal, um, your signal results if you don't have your degree certificate and it's not possible to get it. But if you can get a certificate, please do. That will so that you don't take any chance or any chances or any don't play with any anything. It's only if you are sure that you can get it, then you can you can make the what you have. I hope I answered that. Yeah, so, that, that's very clear. Yes. Then the name of the certificate, you already answered the, the second part. The name yes. on your, yeah, so the name of your internal passport is different from the name of your degree certificate. No problem with that. But you must have a change of name uh, along with it. You must submit that along with it. Submit your change of name with your, with your certificate, with your degree certificate. I will actually send your certificate, you send out along with it so that they will know that it's, you are the one. But don't make sure that the ones on your passport and your birth certificate, or sorry, on your marriage certificate, they are the same. You can have three names, at least two is okay. Then the third one is when my university is sending my transcript, should they put no? Don't give them any name, don't give them any number to quote. Just give them the address of Sweden where, to send, where they send the transcript to. And then that's all. Your, your name is already on the certificate, on your transfer data. They will send it to that, that address. They will match it together in Sweden. Leave that to them. Don't put anything, don't put cover letter, don't give them your, your Swedish um, application number. No, don't. If you do that, you are disqualified. Then the second question here is, um, I want to ask, um, trying to, if you have a low GPA, you don't have any problems with that. Uh, um, 
scholarship doesn't even ask for your GPA at all. It's only your university that may consider that. Even at that, if you choose the right school, you don't have any problems. You'll be admitted. Once you're admitted, you're qualified for scholarship. Scholarship does not need your first class or third class or law or tenth class. No. Any class can apply for scholarship. Once you're admitted to your program, then you, you are qualified for scholarship. You can apply for it. You are qualified to apply for it. Degree doesn't matter. They don't even check your results. Okay. Okay. Um, so we have so many questions from the chat box. So I will start with the first question I can see here from Mary Fabi. Okay. Um, this person says, will one get notification on application portal when your transcript gets to Sweden? So what? When your transcript gets to Sweden, will yes. you be notified? Yes, yes, yeah. You, in your account, you, you check your messages, or there's a place in your in your um, Swedish in your university, university admissions account. There, you have a message box there. You check it, you see the once it gets there, about two, three days after you they receive it, you see it, they will put, put it there. The document that, was, that they received, you see it put there. Okay, we also have another one from Oluchi Anoro. And this person says, my workplace does not have stamp. Can I stamp my document in a court by a lawyer? No, 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 no. Um, th there must be, there, there must be, the lawyer doesn't know what you do in that company. The, company. the lawyer doesn't know that. So in the, um, for instance, if you have your, if you're working your, um, your family business, where you people don't have, a, you, you, whether you have stamp or not, you can't stamp for yourself. So you have to use a notary public. They say, a client, that's an organization. Maybe another organization is your, is your client. Is your client. So you can, they can sign for you using their own stamp of their own organization. That is, that you, you serve them, they know what you do, so they can attest to the fact that you are a leader in your company. Are you getting it? But, yeah. Yeah, so, but if you don't, if your organization is not such, it's not a family business and uh, it's a young company, then you have to look for, uh, either you go and the best thing I advise is go and, and make a stamp. It's, if you're in Nigeria, it doesn't, it's about two, 3,000 naira or 4,000 naira, it will give you a stamp. Uh, you okay. go, go do the stamp yourself. If you're in another country, please just take that stamp and go and do it anyhow. Except the company is not, the country, the company is not registered. But if it's a registered company and they don't have a stamp, go make one for them. And we have also another one from Jewel. And Jewel says, what if you are applying for a course that is in line with your work experience, but it is not, it's not the same with what you studied in your bachelor's? No, it, it doesn't work. Because it, when, you are, when, when they are considering your, uh, your application, they will not look at your work experience to be, uh, to be admitted. It's only a scholarship that look at your work experience. Investor admissions they don't look at your work experience. They don't even need your work experience there. They only look at your transcript. So if you're, what you're applying for, you don't have courses, in your, it doesn't relate with your transcript, then you know admission for you. So, okay. Yeah. Okay, we also have another question from Samaila. Samaila says, can I use my student exams record in place of transcript as my school is presently on student. Your line is breaking. Okay, um, let me repeat, Samaila, is asking, can I use my student exams record in place of transcript as my school is currently on strike? Oh, that means he has not even finished. He's still in school. You're not graduated. Uh, this, uh, the person didn't. Uh, that means he has not graduated. That means he's still in school. No, you cannot use that because they only ask for transcript. That means you have, must have finished. And that by the time you are applying, you must have finished. You, you, you can apply as an undergraduate. You, you, you must have finished, uh, so that you must have a transcript to send, you must have finished the last exam to apply. Mm -hmm. That means your school must, you, you can't send your, please, somebody should be talking. Is this trying to talk? Is that? Uh, um, please, kindly mute your microphone. So, um, there are so many questions, but we'll try as much as possible to cover. Okay, okay, just go ahead. Go ahead, please. Yes. Okay. See, this one's from Daniel. Daniel says, I studied food science and technology, but have over 3,000 hours of work experience in okay. an oil and gas firm. What are my chances for the scholarship? 
in our work in our oil and gas, did they have did they work with the um, food tech, food experience there? If if you if you have experience in food tech, yes. Or if what you did there had to do with food, yes. But if you only went there to drill oil, and you drill oil and then you are not demanding and all that, no, it don't align. So you may be admitted for your first degree, of course, you are admitted for your first degree, you'll be admitted for your course you chose, but it don't qualify you for scholarship. Of course, you are not using your work experience to get admitted because you must submit your transcript. But for S for scholarship, your your food and oil business they don't go together. Except maybe if you your experience in that food and that oil was about food, then you are okay. But if it wasn't about food, no problem, no way. Okay, someone is also asking. Tony, Tony is asking for those of us that don't have NGO experience but enough work experience what can we do uh, no nothing no, that's nothing you can do you must go and get your experience with all your getting get and your experience is a must. you must you must do because Sweden believes in that so much they you must have an end experience if you don't have it then join one you just have <laughs> okay one. so um someone abu Bakr is also asking how about interview is there any sort of interview for this scholarship no, I've never met anybody today. Nobody ever interviewed me. No such interview. You're, they only judge you based on your words of me. That's why you must write your, your motivation letter well, your reference letter must write it well, your CV must do it well. Nobody faces you. All through my stay here, I've never met anybody to interview me. Okay. So, and Fatai, I hope I got that right, is asking, Fatai, Fatai, yes. I have a master's degree now. Can I apply for another master's degree? Does it affect my chances? Do I need to state that in my application? You don't need to because you are coming for master's, they only look at your first degree. I didn't have to put my master's when I was applying. So uh, they, they're not going to look at that. To, to admit for master's program, they, are, they only look at your first degree. You know, your master's is irrelevant. You don't need to put it there. And, okay. your, and what you apply for must tally with your, with your first degree, yes. So um, Newton is asking, for someone who is married with kids, if given the scholarship, can I be allowed to go with my family to Sweden? Yes, you can. The, the, the scholarship allows you, um, permit you to come with yourself, your spouse, and any child under 18. But on one condition, that you have the money to um, sponsor them. You must have, uh, for every child, you must prove that the, and for instance, they say um, per, per month, you must have about, say, 4,000 kroner, then times 12 months for a year, then for each child. So you have, then for your wife too. So you must have enough uh, bank account to show that you can feed them for the three year program you want to stay, or one year program you want to, where you want to, you want to stay. And then your air ticket, everything you use by yourself. Your scholarship money doesn't cover them. So you have to take them. I should have done that, but I couldn't because the money was big. Okay. Yeah, um, and also um, someone is asking, can I just upload my transcript and certificate in the document section or I need to go through my university? Can I do what? Can I just upload my transcript and certificate by myself or do I need to go through my university? Okay, I don't know, did he tell you where he's from? What school is he or she from? Now, if, no. the, now if, if he, if, you go through the university um, website, you'll see that um, some countries are allowed to send their transcript by themselves. There are some countries where the students have their own, and then um, graduates have their own, graduates have their own transcript by themselves. But in my country, Nigeria, you don't. No, your school never, never gives you a transcript. Yes. And, 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 Sweden, and Sweden will not allow you, uh, there are some countries like Nigeria, you are forbidden to send your own transcript by yourself. It must go to your school. Some countries are allowed to send, um, you send by yourself, some other countries no. So you have to check where your country belongs, what category your country belongs. If you're in Nigeria, no, you must send it through your school. You can't send it by yourself. You don't even have it by yourself. So you can't even have it in your hand, let alone send it by yourself. So you, the school must send it. You don't have any, anything to do with it. But if you're from other, other countries where you qualify for that, then you send it yourself. Okay, someone is also asking, um, I'm a leader in a professional association. Can that serve as NGO experience? A professional association? No, it does not an NGO. 
Okay. That's a professional. So it's not an NGO. That is not an NGO. NGO means where you are involved in community service, you are helping humanity, whatever capacity. Professional one is just your own. So, so and um, lastly, we also have a question from Samuel, and he says, Please, I need clarification. I studied computer science in the university. I did my IT with a Dell partnership company in Nigeria, and I have worked with them for over three years. Yeah, but yeah. I want to do networking re related with computer science. However, I am an end user support engineer, hardware engineer. Please, how do I go about it? Yeah, all, 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 all go together. It's an engineer, it's a, it's a computer engineer, right? Yes. So he's in the right, he's in the right field. All everything there is put together. If he took the right courses for, if he check the qualification for the master's program you want to go for and qualifies for it, then no problem. Since it's a, all engineering together. So it's only, it should be concerned about is the um, scholarship. Well, um, questions are still popping in, but we've done over one hour. And no, no great, no great of our one hour. <laughs> You know, we, 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 we know that so many persons, you, have, you still have questions, you still have concerns. Okay. Um, we would love to take all questions, but believe me, that won't be possible. Okay. That won't be possible. Um, but I would like, I would just, for the last question, I would just take um, this, which I'm seeing in the chat box. It says, some courses are interdisciplinary in nature. Can we connect those? Are you, you are sharing your screen and it's not here on the screen. Uh, no, it's not, it's not on the screen actually. It's okay, not, okay, okay. It's not on the screen. Okay. Uh, yes, some courses are interdisciplinary in nature, yes. Then in such courses, you will know if you qualify or not. For instance, if you read um, political science, you can qualify for um, sociology, you can qualify for, for social work, you can qualify for it's um, um, equality or rights or human, human rights or something like that. Yes. Okay. So I, I'm sure that's what he's, he's asking. Yeah. Mm -hmm. So, so you, so you have to now look for, look at the program requirement and know if you meet them. They will always, they will say, for instance, if you are studying um, sustainable development, they, they ask you if you are, whether you are in medicine or engineering or agri you qualify for that. Sustainable development. Any field enters it, so for such courses. But other ones, no. You must be specific. On your, you must take the specific course to qualify. Um. So some people are also live on Facebook, and um, they are also making comments there. But like I said, we we might not be able to take all responses. Okay. How, how, how do we deal with how do we deal with all the responses? And subsequently, is there a means of doing that? Is it on Facebook or? Um, okay, there, there is. We have a, a, a group. We have a Telegram a Telegram group. Um, I think you can always reach out to me on that Telegram group, and I will get your questions to Mr. Felix, and he will address them. So at this point, um, I want to specially thank Mr. Felix for bringing out the time. We know he's, he's a family man. <laughs> And we are not in the same city in, in Sweden. He's in a different city. I'm in a different city. And um, I... Okay, uh, for, for, sorry, for, for quickly. For those who are kind of our age, I'm well over 40. So don't be afraid of applying. Don't be, af apply, don't be afraid of... If, if you're over 40, over, over 100, you're, anybody can apply. Okay. Yeah. Mm -hmm. Everyone can apply. Yes. So um, he's been able... Uh, we, have seen, we have seen so many testimonies. He got this scholarship um, in 2019, and he's, in, he's been in Sweden for over a year. He has experiences both in the application. He has reviewed documents for so many persons. So he's speaking with authority. And the beautiful thing is that he's not representing Swedish Institute in this program, neither am I. I'm a, I'm a Swedish Institute scholarship recipient as well. We are not representing the Swedish government nor the Swedish Institute, but we are doing this free. And Mr. Felix is the guest, and he's doing this totally free. He has dedicated um, his time, his knowledge to... Uh, 
I haven't, I haven't even met you. I don't even know. I've not met him one on one. So. <laughs> yeah, that's the beautiful thing. I, I, I've I, not met one on one. I have not met Mr. Felix one on one. So you're listening. You know? But I'll meet him. It's just that I'm the COVID 19 issues, you know. <laughs> so well, hopefully, I'll meet him soon. I've not met him one on one. But that's the, the, the you know, fascinating thing about it. Okay. Well, he, 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 he has the passion to um, share his knowledge. All get was giving you the opportunity to come over to Sweden and enjoy the opportunities that are here, enjoy the development that you, you equip yourself in. So I want to especially, on behalf of myself and on behalf of all the participants, say thank you very much, sir. Thank you very much, sir, for bringing out the time to share your knowledge with us. He's a second year student of um, SLU. That's the most prestigious agricultural university in Sweden. And so it's the third in the world. Third best in the world, world. yeah. Third best agriculture in the world. Yes. Yeah, so <coughs> and, um, he, sustainable food system, so. he has about two decades experience, you know. <laughs> about, you know. I got the scholarship, I had about four years experience. He got the scholarship, he had about two decades experience. <laughs> that means that um, he's well over 40 years. I'm in my 20s. That shows you that the scholarship is open for everyone as far as you as far as you're qualified. The scholarship is open for you. So I want to thank you, sir. We, we, are, we really appreciate. And um, before everyone, we want to tell you that we will we'll host you once again. We'll host you once again and we, my we, we, we okay. Yeah, that's an acceptance already. No, that's, that's already. But just, just give me enough notice, not enough time. Yeah, so much school work, so much school work. Yeah, definitely. Now, so writing pieces now, it's time for pieces. So just, just give me enough notice. I'll... Yeah. So um, for those of us that have been asking how to join the community, okay, to join my community, you register in the website www.genius.brainforshow.com. Once you put your email address and your name, you will get a message that will direct you to the Telegram group. We have a Telegram group where we share scholarship opportunities and every other opportunities, global opportunities that are out there for you. So once you register in www.genius.brainfashion.com, you will join the uh, Telegram group. So um, this is me on social media. You can get me on Twitter, on Facebook, on LinkedIn, and on YouTube. This uh, event is recorded like I told us earlier on. We also share it on YouTube. You can watch it um, from tomorrow on um, bit.ly slash Amaris Genius. It will be there on YouTube. We, are, we have been live on Facebook on this handle, um, facebook.com slash Amaris Genius Coach. So um, uh, this is my email address. If you have questions, you can always send me an email. I will try as much as possible, but I respond fast on social media. Because you know, I, I'm studying media and communications in Stockholm here, and um, I, I'm always on social media. You know, I live there actually, so it's faster for me to respond to you on social media, on WhatsApp, or on Telegram, or on Facebook Messenger. So connect with me, and I'm grateful that you brought out the time. We had so many participants, and that's so encouraging. We thank you for bringing out the time. Um, Thank you very much. I don't know if Mr. Felix has something to say. What are you doing? Okay, not nothing else. So once um, you create the group, I mean, uh, whether it's, uh, is it um, the Telegram group and the questions come, I can really answer them and then you know how to send it back to them. Or, uh, or if you want to create another or make another presentation, just let me know on time. Then I will, I'm willing to share. And some of, I'm sure some of them here also belong with them to the same WhatsApp group. That's the WhatsApp group that was last year that belonged to from originally. Then I've mentored one or two people there that are here now in Sweden. And I'm, they can always ask questions. Some of them, some people have my personal. Um, some of them have my uh, WhatsApp, then I can ask questions. So it's my pleasure. So thanks so much. Thanks thank for the opportunity. Thank you very much, sir. We're, we're really grateful. We're really grateful. And thank you all participants. At this point, um, I want to say 
have a good night rest and enjoy yourself. Bye-bye. Oh, thanks, so, thanks so much. Bye now. Okay.